Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are, you are the blessedness of the glory of Zion. I truly just honor each and every one of you and I bless the Lord for you. Today, I just want us to look at the very um, uh, topic on communication in marriage and um, to God be the glory. Uh, not that I'm teaching from experience, no, not at all. I'm sharing an experience because I know that um, this can be a, a challenge in marriages between, you know, a family, husband and wife, even not just that alone, you know, it spreads out to communication among friends, among relatives and things like that. But then, you know, there is a way we can communicate. I know there is a, a lot of teachings out there, you know, how, you know, to communicate with one another and things like that. We, we give God the glory for all those teachings. They are the very different dimensions in the Father that we thank God for those teachers at the same time. So, you know, I just want to share from what, um, you know, I was being revealed to me and we take it from there. So I was basically just sitting down and the Lord basically brought <laughs> the concept of a, 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 a video to me. And I believe this is going to uh, basically relate to so many people. So it was just these two couples. They were so excited before they got married, you know, things they thought they knew one another. And eventually they got into a, a marriage. Yeah, they basically got married to one another. And it was a place where, you know, um, the, 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 the partners, you know, the, the female partner, you know, began to notice a little bit you know, a few things here and there. And, you know, she never really spoke out concerning those things, though she was probably <laughs> complaining about them, you know, within herself. And the husband, basically, he was not, you know, actually taking notice of those things. He was just doing what he thought he knew best. So as time went on, you know, just down the line of that conversation in itself, you know, the girl would basically go and, uh, be, uh, you know, she will confide in her friend who would give her tips here and there and she would take on those tips but yet it did not work out no not at all eventually the husband lost his job and I believe in the in that time you know he began to he was he was kind of upset <laughs> that he lost his job because now it puts the wife in a position to be looking after him which was not something that he liked so from there, you know, arguments brewed out. You know, the girl was trying to bring a point across. The man was trying to put his own point across, but yet they were not listening to one another. So it was a place they ended up <laughs> in front of what? In front of a, a counselor. Yeah, they, they ended up in front of a counselor. And it was there they began to express themselves. You know, it was a place where the man, you know, he, he from what he knew concerning marriage, it was on the basis of what? what he saw between his mother and his father. Basically, the mother did not treat the father well. You know, the mother continued to, you know, speak to the father in a condescending manner after the father had an accident. Can you see that? So after the father had an accident, began to speak to him in a condescending manner, treating him however way because she became the breadwinner of the family. So in that moment, you know, the boy was picking all up the streets. You know, he was picking them up. And now he's in a marriage and those things are what? They are manifesting. The same thing with the woman. You know, she was raised up by her mother or by herself. You know, the father walked uh, uh, out on her and the sense of independency, you know, has been on her where she was independent. So hence, when she got married, you know, she would not discuss anything with her husband. She would just go ahead and do it. And that became a problem for both of them because the husband would be like, you didn't tell me concerning these things. These are the things that I should be doing. He wasn't comfortable with it because of what he experienced in his house when he was growing up. She was not liking it because of what she also grew up in so you can see both dimensions they were clashing with one another because of the traumas that both had picked up in what in their what in their single in the single era and now they've brought it into the marriage and is now clashing now they had to sit in front of a counselor for that to be what to be straightened out 
So we begin to see in this dimension, I believe there are so many people that are going through this at this point in time where you're trying to express to your husband, you're trying to express to your wife, you're trying to get her to know some of the things you don't like, you're trying to get him to know some of the things you don't like. But because of the way they were both brought up, it has now what? It has now manifested into what? Into the marriage where nobody is literally sub meeting to one another. No, not at all. Remember, the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, because most of the time when people look at that scripture, right, they look at that scripture on the basis of, hey, you know, wife must love their husband. So they put the emphasis and they put the dimension and the responsibility and the burden on the wife. But no, it didn't begin with Ephesians 5.22. It began with Ephesians 5.21. It says that what? Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the savior. Now it goes on to verse 25. He says that what husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Then in verse 24, it says, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives must also submit to their husbands in everything. We understand, right? You know, it's not a place where we're saying, you know, wives don't submit or husbands don't submit. It's not a responsibility of just one person because we put it on the woman all the time. No, it's not just her responsibility. It's both parties at the same time to submit to what? To one another. And in the submission, from what I was speaking earlier on, it's a place where, you know, being patient with one another, the fruit of the spirit being made manifest to allow communication to what? To ensue. But majority of the time, the reason why communications most of the time breaks down is not because you came into the marriage and then all of a sudden it broke down. No, not at all. Because a lot of people always, you know, they, you know, they think about it as uh, at the moment we got married, things began to change. That is not absolutely true. You know, it's not always true. It's not consistently true because the Bible tells us that as what? As, as whatever my father has not planted, I will what? I will not put it. So these are some situations that have been brewing before you came into marriage. And these are the things that have not yet been dealt with before you came together. You know, because majority of us, we are so, you know, the moment the prophetic word comes, oh, you know, you're going to get married, Ruth and Boaz, you know, all of these prophetic words. We get so excited. But the truth is, majority of us have not done the work. No, not at all. Because I have shared over time on this channel that the very will of the Father, Romans 12, 2, the perfect will of God is for him to sort us completely out before we decide to get married. What do I mean by sorting us out? It means he wants to heal the hurts. He wants to heal the traumas. He wants to heal the betrayals, the disappointments, everything that was rooted that is not part of you. He wants that to be healed. Then when he's satisfied with the healing, then he releases you. So that when you do get into marriage, it doesn't begin to trigger a lot of things. Can you see that dimension? Now think about it. Let's let's put it this way. You know, a woman or a man who has been in, in a relationship before and all of a sudden maybe he got hurt or she got hurt in that relationship. Now, you know, she basically decided to walk with the Lord, now walking in the will of the Father. They come into a relationship. They decided to get married. Now, as they get it, as they get married, you know, the relationship began. Maybe first week or second week or a month, two months. It was all, you know, very, very pleasant. Then after a while, you know, the wife begins to notice, the husband begins to notice. Then the triggers begin to come into effect. Oh, now that person, you know, before I met you, this is what they used to do. I can see the signs manifesting. Can you see? So we now begin to bring the responsibility of those signs and all of those things. We place it on the other person. And we now use that as the basis of what? Experience to bring judgment to the things that God is still working on. That's why the Bible tells us, do not judge anything before it's time. But majority of us, we've judged things before their time. This is the reason why sometimes communication breaks down. 
There are roots to things. And those roots, if you don't get them in check, it can explode in what? In marriage. And this is how you get divorce happening. And this is where people always use that statement, irreconcilable differences. Why is that? Because the root of it was not truly dealt with. I want us to look at the Bible. We're going to look at it on the principle of the Bible, right? Yeah, let's look at it on the principle of the Bible, right from the very beginning, Adam and Eve. Now, let's look at it in this context, right? I believe the Bible tells us that when God was giving Adam instructions, what did he say? He said, you can eat of every tree in the garden, but do not touch that tree in the middle. And which is what? The tree of what? Of knowledge, good and the knowledge of good and evil. You know, upon receiving that instruction, God said, you know, it's not good for this man to be alone. And what did he do? <laughs> you know, God put him to sleep, you know, took a rib and decided to what? To create a woman. Giving him the woman, the serpent came. And what happened when the serpent came? You could have seen that I believe, according to the word, a communication had happened. Because Eve was not there when God was giving Adam instruction. But she stated, God said we should not eat of this tree. So that means at some point, Adam would have communicated that instruction to her. But look at it. She still went on and made her own decision. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Timothy, it said that what? It is not Adam who was deceived, but Eve was deceived. So what does that mean? That Eve was deceived. That means despite the instruction, she still went and done whatever, you know, she saw fit. You can see it, 1 Timothy 2 and 13 and 14. Shall we read it together? The Bible says that what? For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived, can you see, was in the transgression. So then he says she will be saved in childbearing through faith, through faith. So we can begin to see that communication most of the time is always on, you know, I heard it, but I've decided not to listen to you. I've heard it, but I've decided not to listen to you. I've heard it, but I've not, I've decided not to listen to you. So sometimes there can be a decision that one person is not wanting to what? Listen to the other person. But the truth of it is we can so easily blame that person. Ah, that one is speaking to me. He's not even understanding me. That one is speaking to me. He's not even understanding me. Sometimes, you know, basically, we've put, we've put, we've always used that scripture, Leviathan, the twisting serpent. You know, it doesn't mean that Leviathan twists words. There's nothing in the Bible that says Leviathan twists words. No, not at all. But the truth of it is, the reason why that person might not be listening to what you're saying is because either they have chosen not to, or there is a root to a reason why they are not listening to you. Can you see? And some of these things can be based on, like I was sharing earlier on, it can be based on trauma. It can be based on, you know, uh, it can be based on whatever it is that they went through, hurts and disappointments and things like that. And because they were not fully healed, hence the reason that even though it can be a God-ordained uh, kingdom marriage, they go into it, but yet they continue to experience all of these things right in it. Communication is very, very important. In what? In marriage. It is very, very important. Like I was saying, it's not a, like I was sharing concerning the movie. It's not a place where I am saying, hey, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, I have a problem with something. <laughs> you know, I have a problem with something. I, I, you know, I'm not going to talk about it, but I'm expecting the other person to figure it out. That is not, that is not right. Expecting the other person to figure out what you're trying to communicate when you're not communicating it, it is not. When I was growing up, you know, I've, I believe I've shared majority of the things that I went through, you know, uh, on this channel. And for that reason, there was breakdown in communications. Yes, you know, it was some, I used to be able to communicate. I would express myself. You know, I was not shy of expressing myself. No, not at all. You know, I would basically, you know, I would just voice my, my opinion out as I, as I basically, you know, will at any point in time. But eventually, as the relationships came on, you know, relationships that were not of the Lord, you know, gradually, you know, the hurts were happening, the disappointments were happening, the betrayals were happening, and gradually, the breakdown in communications came to be. Even to the point, you know, when I when I got married at first, you know, the 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 first uh, uh, marriage which was blessed, you know, in that moment in time before the Lord released from it, you know, it was a place the person was always saying, hey, you know, you don't communicate, you don't communicate, you don't communicate, and it was not that they were right, you know, they were wrong. 
they were absolutely right. But I decided to take it to the Lord. And I'm like, Lord, help me to, you know, just help me. It was a cry. Lord, help me to communicate. I want to be able to communicate the right way. Because, you know, it's it can be a place where you can communicate and blame the other person. You can communicate and blame the other person. And all of this, like I always share, is on the basis of what? Our identity. Because when you know who you are, you are able to stand up and, you know, speak as the Lord is basically encouraging you to speak. You know, we have to speak in wisdom too. <laughs> Can you see? Communication, it has to be done in wisdom. Because the Bible says you have to look at the other person as what? As a wicked vessel. And it's a place we're not supposed to, you know, we're not there to basically like condemn the person, condemn this person, condemn this person because of their actions. No, because most of the time, you know, I'm just going to share my own experience. You know, most of the time, you know, when I was in that relationship in itself, every communication, I had to do it in accordance to the will of God. Father, teach me how to communicate. Teach me how to communicate. And I believe when the wedding happened, you know, uh, you know, it was a place where, you know, it was still a struggle, but it was getting better. It was still a struggle, but it was getting better. And eventually, you know, I was now being introduced and said, hey, OK, let's go and see a counselor. Maybe we need to sit down with somebody and help us to, you know, talk about these things. But then it was a place the Lord was warning me. Don't do it. So I want to use this to basically emphasize for those who might be seeking, you know, you want, you're wanting as a son of God, as a son of God, you might be, you know, maybe there is a breakdown in communication in your relationship. And now you're thinking to yourself, I need to basically, we need to sit down and talk to a counselor to basically express our views or whatever we're going through in this relationship. I'm not saying sitting down on a chair, speaking to a counselor is a bad thing. That is not why I am here. No, not at all. But I want us to look at it because when I was crying out to the Lord, this is one of the things he showed me because of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. It says that what? It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the pattern of the world can be for you to go and sit in a chair and talk to the person who has gone into a university, learned about, you know, whatever it is, how to counsel, then now sits you on the chair, charges you per hour, then you sit down there and you begin to express and talk to him about the things that you're going through. Not condemning those, we honor that dimension in itself. But I want us to look at what the scripture in itself is saying concerning things like that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says here, if any of you has a dispute with one another, so in marriages, there will be disputes. In marriages, there will be breakdown of communications. In marriages, there will be all of that in itself. But this is what the Lord is saying to each and every one of us. It says, if any of you has a dispute with one another, do you dare take it to before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the Lord's people? What is he trying to say to you? He's trying to say, before you go to that doctor who went to get a certificate in what? In a degree in, in Harvard or in some university or in some college. Why do you want to take it before them rather than take it before the Lord's people? And when you talk about the Lord's people, because majority of you, you might have, you know, a situation where you're in your sanctuary. Oh, let's go and speak to our pastor concerning it. No, not at all. I'm not saying you should not talk to your pastor or your apostle or things like that. No, not at all. No, 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 no. I am asking you, you know, by the mercy of the Lord to hear me very clearly. It's just saying to you before the Lord's people means take it to the person that the Lord is instructing you to take it to. Because majority of the time, you know, we might say because we are loyal to this to this pastor, we are loyal to this sanctuary, it is right to take it before them because they are my pastor. That can be right. But then, is that the person the Lord wants you to take what is what you're going through to take it before them? No. The Bible says here in verse 2, or do you not know that the Lord's people will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things of life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, do you ask for a ruling from those whose way of life is scorned in the church? I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a 
disputes between believers, but instead one brother takes another to court. And this is in front of unbelievers. So you can see you're going through challenges or communication breakdown in your marriage. And the first person you're thinking to take it to is a doctor who has 20 years experience in basically counseling people. That is not the will of God, not according to the word of the Lord. Not according to the word of the Lord. Why? Because the person is going to give you based on the foundation of the world. Do not conform to the pattern of the world. Christ said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, taking it to a counselor, you are building it on what? On the foundation of the world. And this is not the will of God for your marriage. So you can see that when they begin to give you the counsel, you are now abiding by what they give you. And by abiding it, when you can't live up to expectation, there is another breakdown. So you can see the consistency of that rather than take it to the before the Lord's people. So, Father, I'm going through this thing in my marriage. Help me to understand it. What, you know, help me to basically, what can I do concerning this? And he says, okay, you know, I need you to speak to this sister. I need you to speak to that brother. I need you to speak to them. And the word of the Lord is in their mouth. And by the time the person begins to speak to you, you begin to understand what is actually going on. You begin to see the root and even understand it because they are speaking of it from a spiritual dimension. Because a lot of people, they share counsels based on experiences. They share counsels based on what they've studied by a percentage, 40% of this, 50% of this. And by giving such counsels, you are even doing a lot more harm to the union than you're repairing it. Can you see that dimension? It says, why do you take it before the ungodly? Why do you take it to that doctor, you know, who is basically has got all manners of certificate, but he's not born again? Why would you take it to that, you know, that physician or whatever counselor it is? And they've been there. They're not even born again. And you go there, you sit there, and then you're basically like, yeah, this is the, this is what, this is what needs to be done. And you are born of God. He said, do I say, I'm not saying this to shame you. No. <laughs> but in 1 Corinthians 6, 5, he said, I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough? That's because you have not taken time. So that's why I first shared with each and every one of us, helping us to understand that the reason most of the time for the breakdown in communication is because they have yet to what, deal with some roots of some certain situations, which has what? Which has flowed into the relationship in itself. So now you begin to understand it. Now, uh, you know, from my own, like, I'm just sharing because I know this will basically, you know, minister to somebody. You know, when I was in the previous marriage, you know, it was a place where I began to cry to the Lord. Please, Father, help me to be able to communicate right. Help me to say the things that I need to say. And it came to the point. One of the first things the Lord taught me was how to listen. So it was not like I had a problem with that before. No, not at all. But in this dimension, it was taking me even deeper because, yeah, I listened to people, but maybe I was not listening intently at first. Perhaps I wasn't. But now he was encouraging me, just listen. So most, most, so when the person is speaking, I would listen. I would listen in order that I may bring the right counsel for the person in order for them to be able to walk in it. Sometimes the counsel was not received, <laughs> not at all, because it was in that moment, you know, because the Lord was helping me to come into my identity. You know, most of the counsels at first that people gave me, I never received them too. No, not at all, because I thought I was always right. <laughs> I thought I was always right. I thought I was always right until the Lord had to strip that off. No, he had to strip it off. So when he stripped it off, the first thing he said was, you need to learn how to listen. <laughs> so you can see. So in that moment, we had to go back to the basics, 101, listening. So I would listen to the person. I would basically get what it is that they're saying, help them to understand where I was coming from. So every accusation of you don't listen, you don't hear what I'm saying, you don't all of that, you know, even though it still continued, the Lord said, no, you're a good listener. Because I remember there was a day I was sat with a, a, a lovely uh, son of God and the person was saying to me, because it was then I was having this challenge of, Lord, you know, this person keeps accusing that I'm not listening, I'm, I don't pay attention, I don't do this. So in the moment of crying out to the Lord, after a few years of the Lord basically restoring that, he said, you are a good listener. 
I'm still learning. So it's not like I've got it all together yet. <laughs> no, I'm still learning. So he said, yeah, you are. So the person was basically helping to understand you are a good listener. So the moment I came into the understanding of my identity, listening to be able to give the right counsel, now the other person, they stopped listening. So it was a place, you know, I, it was a place where I, it, I was basically much more comfortable speaking to people outside about what I was going through than people than speaking to the person in the marriage. Was that a right thing to do? No, not at all. But why did that happen? Because the person in there stopped listening. That no matter how much I speak, they were not listening at all. So that's one of the things that led to the separation. So no matter what I say, <laughs> it was always referring back to seven years ago, 18 years ago, 20 years ago, five years ago, but we are here today, <laughs> you know? So in that dimension is where the father is encouraging majority of you. That some of you, the reason why communication in marriages breaks down. One of the reasons, another reason, like I've shared, is on the, the first reason I helped us to understand because of the hurts, because of the traumas from outside of the marriage that we've brought in. Now the triggers are manifesting the breakdown of the communication. Secondly, the listening skills are no longer there. Because sometimes the listening can begin to fade away. Why? Because familiarity has ensued. The moment you become familiar with one another, you no longer have, you know, it's like the respect is gone. It's like the honor is gone. It's like, you know, nobody is basically wanting to listen to anybody anymore. You know, you don't want to listen to counsels anymore. You don't want to basically submit to one another anymore because of the familiarity that has what? That has gone on between them. Hence the reason now we need to go back to the to go and sit before a doctor. We need to go and sit before a counselor who needs to sort these things out. And that is not even the will of God. So in that regard is where the father is saying there are people in the body that you can bring your case to for them to be able to listen and then restore back onto uh, the dimension the father intends to restore your marriage. Communication is important. You know, that's one of the dimensions <laughs> because, you know, when I was watching that movie, one of the things that manifested, <laughs> I'm going to, you know, don't, not condemning anybody. No, not at all. Because when I look back at it, right, this minute, I find it funny because when I first got in it, you know, one of the things that was always manifested was toothpaste. You know, you press the toothpaste from the middle. You press the toothpaste from this. You use too much of this. You use too much of that. It was accusation of you use too much of this. You use too much of that. You are wasting this. You are wasting that. Until one day, we went and sat before this amazing couple. And as we sat there, you know, the Lord Jesus just walked into the room and Jesus began to speak in that moment through that person. And he said, you know what? Now begin to get your own things separately. You get your thing separately. You get yours separately. And in that way, the argument concerning that basically comes to an end. I don't really, I'm not really concerned about those things. <laughs> not at all. You know, I'm not really concerned about, you know, where you press this from, you know, where you do this, where you do that from. But it was a place where the Lord was helping to understand, to avoid that because I sensed so, so strongly that the enemy was using that to attack emotions. So you can see, that's why I was saying a lot of us is because of the trauma. So now we begin to understand, you know, which I have shared on this channel many times, that the root of it were traumas, hurts that was that we that was not surrendered to the Lord before coming right in. Now the triggers, that's how this person used to behave. That's how that person used to behave. This how that and that is not how the Lord wants it right from the very beginning. You know, and begin to like, hey, that's what you used to do. You know, as soon as an argument starts, as soon as, you know, big, the misunderstanding starts, you know, you begin to refer. That's what you did five years ago. That's what you did 20 years ago. Then now you can see the triggers of the past comes back alive because their hurts have not been dealt with. Can you see that? A lot of people. Even, you know, Jesus experienced this, <laughs> even though Jesus was not married, but he experienced this with his disciples. Yes, because with his disciples, if you read John chapter 16, he was explaining the things of the kingdom. He was helping them to understand, you know, and Jesus had been speaking and had been speaking and had been speaking, but they were not literally, you know, they were not getting it. Not at all. You know, and if you read John 16, 28 to 29, you will hear where the disciples, he said, Jesus said, I came from the father and entered into 
into the world. In turn, I will leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said, see, now you are speaking plainly without figures of speech. Now we understand that you know all things and that you have no need for anyone to question you. Because of this, we believe that you came from God. So what happened? Didn't they believe before? <laughs> because of the figures of speech? So I'm not saying the apostles were, you know, they had troubles, they had traumas and things like that. No, no, not at all. But the communication Jesus was communicating with them was on a higher level. Can you see? And yet they didn't get it because you can see it all throughout the what? All throughout the scripture. When he says, be careful of the bread, they said, what? You know, we thought we brought bread on this journey. Jesus said, what? God, don't you understand what I'm saying? Then they realized, wow, he was talking about the teachings. So you can see that's the reason most of the time, because maybe somebody is speaking in a higher dimension and somebody is yet to come up. But rather than being patient with one another, we can begin, it can become an argument. Well, you're not, you're not making that communication clear to me. You're not speaking it clearly to me. Or it can be a situation where the wife is doing things without the husband's consent, where the husband is doing things without the wife's consent. It is absolutely wrong. You know, sometimes the Lord can say to you, hey, I need you, you know, whatever the left hand is doing, don't let the right hand know. So there can be some times the Lord is saying, hey, what I'm asking you to do, I don't want you to share with your wife yet. What I'm asking you to do, maybe not with your husband yet. You know, just be, be still and know that I'm God. Because you know why? It can be because they've not come into that dimension yet. And the Lord is gradually bringing them. Hence why the Lord gave the charge to the wives to submit. Because sometimes the Lord can give them a revelation that is way beyond the husband. And some of them can get prideful. Some of them can get all bossy. Some of them can want to rule over. Hence the reason why the Lord says to them to submit. And the Lord says to the man, because of what? The behaviors of the wife. Love them as Christ loves the church. You can see the whole church. <laughs> There's so much different dimensions of behaviors in the church. But the Lord is still saying, love them regardless. Sometimes it's not easy. It takes the grace of God. That's why we're not supposed to do it by ourselves, not to lean on our own understanding, but trust in the Lord. So you can see the dimension of how communication is what is basically affecting. But the Lord is helping to understand. It's a place where for this communication being restored, I don't want you taking. Can you see that? I don't want you taking your dispute because the moment you begin to dispute with one another, the first thing you're doing is basically, oh, I'm going to have to talk to, to my friend about it. I'm going to go and talk to my mother about it. I'm going to go and talk to my father about it. I'm going to talk to my brothers about it. I'm not saying that in itself is wrong. No, not at all. I'm not saying don't talk to people. No, not at all. But it's a place that you have to first talk to the Lord and let him guide you. Can you see that dimension? In that way, you're not putting your business in the presence of people that the Lord doesn't want it to be from. Because in that way, some of us, we've spoken to people and they've taken those conversations and used it as an accusation against us. Then after the whole thing is settled, then you say to yourself, I wish I hadn't done that. Can you see that? I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't, you know, spoken about my relationship with that person. I, I wish I hadn't done that. So now you can begin to understand it. Because in my own in my own scenario, the moment you know all those all of those things began to manifest, you know, it was a place, even before I spoke to my own family, I was always talking to the Lord. And one of the things the Lord was showing me, I believe it was in the book of Isaiah. He said, you know, uh, the person, the, you know, the one who leads them. <laughs> Can you see? He says the one who leads them. He leads them astray. Can you see that dimension? He said he leads them astray. He leads them astray. So sometimes the person you are speaking to can give you a counsel that is totally not of the will of God. But because the person is your friend, because the person you trust them, because you, you know, you know, you now begin to take an advice. And, you know, it can be a wrong advice. Can you see that dimension? And the father is wanting to bring reconciliation to all of this in itself. Can you see that? The, the Lord wants to bring reconciliation to that in itself because it is high time. And he says, I don't want you taking your business. I don't want you taking it before the ungodly. 
So you can understand. Even in my own during in my own union, not wanting to, you know, I share this completely with the love of the Father because I believe this will basically, you know, every time the Lord encourages to share it, I know it is helping somebody out there. You know, because at time, you know, when the Lord began to help me to understand, you know, with with the person I was with then, and they were basically confiding in their mother. They told me, <laughs> can you see that dimension? They told me that whatever, you know, if I'm going through situations, I shouldn't discuss it with my own family. But then she goes on. She basically discusses everything with her mother. And then she comes back. And, you know, I know I didn't tell them anything, but she did because the Lord basically always let me know that she has. So now you can begin to understand it because asking the Lord concerning it, I was given, you know, the scripture. He said in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16, it says, for those who guide these people, mislead them. And those who mislead them are swallowed up. So you can see, the father was helping me to understand the roots of the problem. The mother was misleading them completely. So the counsel the mother was given was absolutely wrong, hence the reason. So even though I was communicating what I needed to communicate, the accusation kept coming, no, you're not communicating. No, you're not communicating. But yet I was communicating. But because the communication was not what was pleasing to them, then they rose up. So this is why I said your identity is very, very important. Because when you know who you are, you are not going to be tossed to and fro. And because of your partner at the same time, you know, because of the love, the, what God has called both of you, you cannot continue to what? You cannot say, hey, uh, my friend, my friend gave me this counsel. My brother gave me this counsel. My mother gave me this counsel. Those counsels can be wrong, whether it's your mother, your father, or your friends. They can be wrong. The first person we need to talk to when things like that happen is to talk to the Lord and let him lead and guide us. So you can see. So for those of you who have come into the knowledge of your identity and the Lord is releasing because I remember, I remember there was a, there was a wedding that the Lord basically encouraged me. You know, I believe this is a word that is for somebody out there. You know, I, you know, when the Lord first gave me, you know, he gave me this word to speak to this couple when I met them and went for their wedding. And this is what the Lord was sharing with both of them. He said, look, this is what I'm speaking to you today. When both of you, when you begin, when you know, when challenges arise in your union, and you need to sort it out before both of you decide to go and inquire from people and decide like I need to get counsel from this friend or that friend. Both of you seek God first. Matthew 6 33. Seek first the kingdom of God. When you speak to God, Holy Ghost will direct you to whom you need to speak to and for that reason you will get quickly what you intend to get from the Lord because if you speak to the wrong person, it can cause delays. Can you see that? Can I repeat that to you? I am going to repeat that. When you come into your union and something happens between both of you, before you decide to take it to anybody else, be it your family or your friends, speak to the Lord concerning it first and let him guide you concerning it to lead you to the person he needs you to what? To speak that to. Can you see that? So it's a place the Lord will guide you. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 2, it says Joseph slept. Mary had, you know, God had already spoken to Mary. Joseph was pondering. The Lord appeared to him. They both had matching dreams. You know, the word was confirmed to Joseph. They became one. So what God spoke to Mary, that is why I said to you that sometimes the Lord can speak to somebody first concerning some things. You can see with Mary, right? The Lord said, hey, <laughs> Mary, you're going to have a child. Really? Wow. Be it unto me according to your word. Uh, Joseph, <laughs> the Lord said, we're going to have a child. What did Joseph do? I'm going to divorce this woman. I am going to divorce this woman. <laughs> <laughs> that is why, you know, we thank God for the realm of our sisters. We thank God for their realms. You know, you know, for those who walk humbly, because some of that, some people can get such revelation and they will begin to board it, uh, boss their, their husbands, they begin to lord it over their partners because God spoke to them first. Can you see that dimension? Because God spoke to them first. But yet, can you see, while Joseph was pondering to divorce this woman, the angel of the Lord came and said, Joseph, what is in that woman is of God. He gave Joseph peace. The same goes for you, husbands. 
When God gives you something, don't lord it over the sister. Don't lord it over the wife. But gradually bring her up. Yes, until you come into oneness of that agreement. God is going to give both of you an answer of peace. So don't let that be the reason why communication breaks down. Don't let that be. Because you know why? When all of that begins to ensue, that's where all of that communication begins to. But the Lord is about communication. And this is what I have always taught. Any person who is good, you know, because when I was going through my own communication challenges, there were so many hurts. There were hurts in times past, you know, and I, I, I was still healing from those hurts to the point that, you know, when I came into the dimension of a, 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 a religion, even church was hurtful at the same time too, to the point that it broke down my own communication with God. Can you see? It broke down communication with God, communication with my own family. So you can see that in itself. Even to communicate with my with my father was very, very challenging. Communicating with God was so much challenging because of the hurts, the traumas that was what? That I picked up before I went into it. But thank God, he used it to to heal the situation. That is why I said I am grateful for that first for that first relationship that happened. I am grateful to the Lord because he used it to restore communication once again. Communicating in the way of the Lord. So you can see that dimension. That is why, you know, before anything, I speak to the Lord first. And then upon, upon speaking to the Lord, he directs. And upon direction, whether it is received or not received, as long as it is in obedience to the Lord, I am satisfied. Now the opinions of men don't matter. But in relationship, in marriage, it matters because... Why? God has brought you together. She is your helper. So if the Lord basically is calling both of you to do something, communication is always essential. She wants to know. It's not that she's lording it over you. She wants to know because she wants to get clarity. And he wants to know. Hence the reason why he's asking uh, of you. What is the Lord saying to you? You know, what has the Lord spoken to you concerning this situation? You know, and in that in itself, as you begin to work together, you know, it begins to what? It begins to advance a lot of things in the marriage in itself. Bringing, you know, opening up to things. And in that way, you're able to deal with the root even together. So this is the dimension of the counsel of the Lord concerning, you know, taking dispute. So when, you know, when communication breaks down, because I don't, I, you know, I pray that any communication that has broken down in marriages, I speak to the root of it. I bless those marriages with healing. I bless those marriages with restoration, that the angel of restoration will bring back communication back, you know, will bring it alive once again. Wherever communication, you know, has been stolen, the thief came to steal, to kill and to destroy, to cause the husband and wife to misunderstand one another. I I break the powers of that in itself and I speak the mercy of God over that union. I restore it in oneness back in Christ Jesus and I declare the glory of the Lord over it in Jesus' name. The Lord wants to restore. It is his will to restore. He wants to restore. There are a lot of marriages that communication has broken down and like I said, one of the roots like I shared with you is familiarity. We have to learn not to be familiar with one another. People can, you can get so comfortable with one another. Ah, you know, I, 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 you're, you become so familiar that, you know, you don't respect one another again. You become so familiar, you don't even honor one another again. You become so familiar, you can't even tell the person you love them anymore. You know, ah, yeah, I don't, you know, he, he knows I love him. He knows, she knows I love her, you know. No, that's not how. <laughs> she doesn't know until you tell her. Can you see that? I used to be that too. You know, I expected people to know. And the Lord began, you know, the day the Lord sat me down, he said, how do you expect them to know if you don't tell them? You're in need. And if you're in need, if you don't ask, how will it be given to you? So if you're with that woman, if you're with that man, and you don't speak what you're concerned about, you know, how do you expect them to know? So you can see that was the journey of my healing. To the point that, you know, it came to a point in the union in itself that every time I express, you know, I was listening, but every time I try to express my own opinion, they don't want to hear it. So hence the reason I end up telling people outside because I remember a conversation, you know, that went, you know, you know, you don't, you speak to other people outside, but you don't speak to me. I do speak, but it's because like Eve, they were not hearing and they chose not to. 
So you can see that dimension and it goes the same thing. You can see that in the body at the same time. Among the prophets, you can hear it. <laughs> you know, when the prophets speak, the people, yeah, we've heard you. You've heard, but did you listen to what was said? Yeah, we listened, but did you hear what was spoken? That's why it says, when a dispute happens, don't be so quick to take it before the ungodly. Don't be so quick to go and sit on a seat paying how much an hour to speak before an ungodly person to bring restoration to what the Lord has not ordained. You're only causing delays. If you go and speak to that person because somebody recommended them, that will cause delays. Speak to the Lord. He will direct. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man. He will order your steps. So it's not, this is not about, you know, it's not about people sharing experience, experience or one point or two points or three points or seven points. No, not at all. Like I've always shared, it's not living by points, but by listening. And I, I like this channel, I've always continued to declare, it's always about dealing with the roots of situations. It's always about the roots. The moment you know the root of it, then the problem, the tree withers. The problem is gone once the root is dealt with so that your children will not inherit it. Your children's children will not have to go through it once you have dealt with it. So you can begin to understand it. Like I've shared, the first reason is because a lot of people, they have not healed before they came into marriage. And hence the reason why communication broke down. And the Lord is showing mercy over that in itself. Healing those things so that communication can arise again. Secondly, it's about you taking, you know, whatever it is, the disputes that you have with one another, don't take it to any ungodly person. Before you speak it to those around you, speak it to the Lord first. I know you might be angry about the situation. You might be upset with the situation. Yeah, you know, it's okay to be angry, but do not sin while you're at it. You know, it's okay to be upset, but do not sin while you're at it. Speak to the Lord concerning it and let him heal you concerning those situations. And when he does, you know, he will now direct you to the people that you need to speak to. And the third one, don't be so familiar with one another that you stop, you know, you, you don't basically speak the things that you were speaking right from the, you know, from the very beginning. Just because you're two years in, you're three years in, 10 years in, 15 years in. No, you don't just stop because you're how many years in? No, you have to keep at it. Your relationship with God is to keep at it. If you talk to God every day, why would you not talk to the woman or to the man every day? If you talk to God, you know, Father, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm speaking concerning. You know, why not the woman? That woman is a dimension of the Father El Shaddai. So it is the place where the Lord is reconciling those three things. And he says the reason why the communication broke down is either the healing before you got together or the healing that has, you know, or the thing, the hurts, you know, your hurts before you got together, or the hurts that has happened within, but you have not forgiven yourself over it. Secondly, you know, the people that you could have spoken to, some people are actually accusing you with the things that you've said to them. Maybe because of envy, they envy your marriage. Maybe because of jealousy, they're jealous of it. Maybe because they don't want to see you together. You know, they, they want to break, like I said, it says that what? The one who, the one, what did I read? I read in Isaiah chapter 9. And I said, the one who guides these people misleads them. Can you see? And those who are guided are led astray. So you can see <laughs> the person you're speaking to is thinking, you know, I'm guiding this person, but yet misleading. And then the third familiarity. And this is the mercy the Lord is showing concerning all these three things to bring it back together. Then he will begin to give you the counsel that is needed. And for you, you're going into a relationship and it's helping you to understand that as you go into it, as you go into it, this is the counsel of the Lord. Speak to him concerning it first before you say, I'm going to speak to my pastor. I'm going to speak to my, you know, I'm going to speak to this. I'm going to speak to that. Speak to the Lord first and let him guide you. Maybe that situation, he doesn't want your pastor to know, but somebody around you to be able to basically solve the situation. That's what he did with me. Because when I was basically going through it, I was like, Lord, help me. And then the Lord began to bring people. 
He first brought uh, this wonderful man, you know, and as I was speaking to the man, the man first, it was the first person to point out my transgression. And he said, hey, in that marriage, you are not supposed to marry a divorced woman because if you marry that person, you are not going to be able to preach about it the way you ought to preach about it because it's compromise, it's hypocrisy. So I'm grateful for everything that I learned in there and I'm grateful that the Lord brought me out of it. So continuing in that, the Lord restored the status and that is for so many of you at the same time. So not just that in itself, he brought other people who were basically, you know, he brought other people that helped me to understand and he was given, you see, the right counsel concerning it, how to deal with that situation. Because if I had spoken to this person, other people were saying to me, ah, it's your fault. It's your fault. You did this. You did this. But the Lord said, no, it's not your fault. The person refused to listen. The person did not, they chose their own way rather than the way of the Lord. I was absolved of every guilt. And the Lord is absolving you too. He says, I know you did it. It's not like you didn't. Yeah, you did it. But I'm absolving you of the guilt by healing the traumas, by reconciling the very manifestation of who you are back to myself. And this is the reason why I'm bringing it all back together to heal that union once again. So are you going to surrender that rather than fight it? Don't fight it. Surrender it. And when you surrender it with Christ, you fight it because he wants to restore it once again. So I just want to share that to the glory of the Lord. To God be the glory. And I, I pray that this, you know, I, I was, I basically had a few notes, but I just had to basically, I, I had to go in the way of the Lord in that in itself. So I just want to just share that in obedience to the Father. And I just pray that the Lord, I, I just want to pray for marriages because, you know, that's one of the, that's one of the joy on this channel. We pray for marriages are so very strongly. And I just want to pray that right this minute to the glory of my Father who art in heaven, I take authority over every marriage, every dispute every discord, every hurt, every trauma that has manifested in the marriages of your people. I release the restoration of the Lord over those marriages. I declare the angel of the Lord. He says, upon this rock I will build. I release the angel of the Lord right into marriages in this hour that has broken down in communication. I release the angel of the Lord to begin to restore where they will come back together restituting, where they will come back together forgiving one another, where they will come back together in wholeness because it says i pray above all else that you prosper in health as your soul that together their soul is healed that together they are prospering i speak light over these unions now once again the manifestation of the presence of god will be seen over this union that the glory of the lord will be manifested over this union i bless this marriage the marriage is oh lord i bless it with life every marriage that has broken down in communication i bless it with life that the life of the Father may be made manifest in the consciousness of the Spirit that He is. The glory of the Lord manifest over you. He said, I have come to Zion, the city of the living God, to the innumerable company of angels. And I release the company of angels over this union and I declare it restored. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings to you. <laughs> to God be the glory. And I pray that the Lord will glorify Himself with the glory that He has inside of you. God bless you so very much. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Love you all. God bless you.